Welcome to the Newgrounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Ninja Muffin. Welcome to NGP New Runs Podcast. This is the special somewhat two-part, part two of the old boomer flash devs that we did last week. And who we got? Who do we got in the studio? Why don't we all introduce ourselves? My name is Josh. Uh, I make video games and I publish them under the name Stuffed Wombat on the internet. And part of the internet is New Runs, so that's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Who else do we got in the studio? Uh, yeah. Oh. Go go on, Matt. Yeah. Thank you. I knew that would happen. That's why I wasn't <laughs> saying anything. <laughs> My name is uh, Matthew Hobbs. I go by Matt Ugg online. And I I think I'm a game developer. I think that's the, the term I'm going to use. <laughs> we all been there. We're all game devs. And this, this yeah. is the game dev circle. This is the little the crew. And who's yeah. the who's the last little guest we got? Yeah, hey guys, I'm Philippe. Uh, I go by the name of Nunesu, and no one can pronounce it correctly. But yeah, that's how you pronounce it. What the fuck? Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, PG thirteen. Uh, so I make games as well. I actually start making games. I never finish them. But yes, that's me. Hey. Oh yeah, that's the first. <laughs> So as as everyone introduced themselves, we all know we're all game devs. How do we all get into the biz? How'd that all happen for you guys? Uh, Matt, Matt, I want to see you. Me first? Okay. Yeah. (laughs) I actually went to college for three years in London, Ontario for a course called Video Game Design Development. I thought it was such a good idea. I was so stoked. And then the harsh realities of the job got thrown at my face. (laughs) And, um... Yeah, but like I finished my three years and I was kind of having like this crisis of like what direction I want to take because I I actually do 3D modeling most of the time or like that's my job right now. I'm doing like 3D modeling and animation and and it's like a pretty good job. But I think like the the big goal is like somehow make uh, game development work. And I think that's what I'm kind of doing right now with web development, kind of proof of concept, trying these new ideas out. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. my story, dude. That's the that's the backstory. What about yeah. uh, what about you, uh, Josh Wombat, Stuff Wombat? How did you get in the biz? I, I I never did. I just <laughs> made some games. <laughs> like uh, I have zero education in in that regard. I just was really sad and scared of the outside and I sat inside and made games for like five years <laughs> instead of. <laughs> Instead of doing the, the things you're supposed to do as, as a human being. Um, no, it, it was, it was really an obsession with making games that like is more of an obsession with, with like generally making things. Like before I made games, I drew comics and I made like animation movies and stuff and actual movies and like I wrote stories and and like I I, I pretty much worked in every medium and then I got stuck in in video games because it was it's it's like it's the easiest to do stuff that has never been done before in games because they're just the youngest medium Mm -hmm. and also you don't have to go outside and interact with other people to make games yeah at least like at least like like on (laughs) on 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 the on the online level right like sit in your room just a load of game over a weekend for a game jam (laughs) Yeah, so that's 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 how I got in, right? And then and then that was just the only thing I knew, so I had to kind of like try to make money from it because I, I oh, have yeah. literally nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> and me and Asu, what's okay, your what's uh, your backstory? What's your gaming backstory? Game dev. So I started really opposed to Josh. Uh, a few friends invited me to participate in a game jam, so I told them I never made games before. I was like programming in college and they invited me. I said, okay, let's go. I, it was a 48 hours game jam and I spent the entire first day learning how to use Unish and I've been using Unish, <laughs> I've been using Unish now for like four years. Yeah. And that's basically how I started and never stopped. 
Yeah, yeah. That's one thing. That's one thing I wanted to bring up. Like all the, the kind of game jam scene, I guess you want to call it, where it's like I see a lot of people. I feel like you guys see it too, where it's like a lot of people kind of rise the ranks through like participating in you know many different jams and whatnot. Like, what's your guys' uh, experience with jams? What do you? What's your process or whatever? Oh, I love jams. Like I made. I participated in like 20 jams already. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know, I, I really liked the, the whole process uh, starting and ending in like tw- uh, 24 or 48 hours. It's like incredible to have a game complete in that period of time. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely an aspect of like uh, needing to get something done or whatever. We all we all been on the jam scene, definitely. Yeah. It's like super uncomfortable See. the whole time. Which is what I kind of like. Like, there's, like, this deadline, right? I think yeah. that's, like, my favorite part. Just actually having to, like, finish something or try to finish something. <laughs> it's, like, yeah. Like there's this ambiguity of, like, these big projects where it's, like, I could just work on this for, like, eternity. And it's, like, well, will anybody even see it? But... Yeah, there's definitely that aspect to it. Have you, uh, what's your, have you done, like, a bigger project of, like, a solo besides, like, other than a jam or whatever, like that's all I did in school was these like huge projects, like month month long projects. Yeah, or like not month long, but like four months, like a full semester. And that's why I felt like so brutal about it was it's like this polishing turd aspect was to it. I don't, I don't think it was like that bad, but I I kind of like quickly trying something and testing it. Yeah, yeah. Rather than like these long projects, but. I think long projects are you have to start eventually doing them because like there's steps that are like longer down the road that you need to learn how to do and they're kind of scary like steam like yeah, Wombat yeah. just released freaking uh, <laughs> gut whale yes. and like I'm sure towards the end like there was like these things that you had to do that it's just like completely out of the ordinary. Yeah, like it's it's it, it wasn't the first game I put on steam luckily so I wasn't oh. completely slapped in the face but. It's it's like a completely different world, but mm-hmm. but like like about 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 game jams. What I think of, like I I did a lot of game jams and I did a lot of like self-imposed jams. Like for a year, I made one game per month, and then yeah. I did like okay, now mm-hmm. I'm gonna sit down and in three hours I'm gonna have a prototype and stuff like that. Like I set myself a a, a lot of of deadlines, and I think now that like. Game jams are so popular and nice because they are like they're they're pretty close to playing a game kind of compared to like long term game development where in a game jam you get a set time frame you get a clear objective you get a theme you get a lot of input you get mm-hmm. a lot of like stuff that surrounds it that kind of makes it easier to engage with yeah and that's also what uh, eventually kind of limited, I think, because you're never going to have time to like really reflect about what you're doing during a jam. It's, it's absolutely amazing for learning tools and like learning if you enjoy making games and stuff like that. But I've kind of stopped yeah. doing game jams. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, I think it's like that next step, though, you know? Yes. I'm still on the first step. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I never left. I love game jams because yeah. I don't take myself seriously. I like I say ah, I have to finish this in one week. I can't. I just I just don't believe in myself about the <laughs> the lines. And I need someone external to take the agents for me and here are the game jams. So basically they do the hard stuff for me, like the project management stuff. We're saying uh what we're saying is the the next step now. Like moving on from game jams it's like yeah yeah like i i don't know like i kind of have like this this map i I don't know it 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 really depends on what your personal goals are for game development i think like if you want to pay rent with games eventually you're gonna have to make bigger stuff or you're just gonna have to sell your jam games right Mm -hmm. i think you can make a living just from selling jam games i guess that's somehow possible but if like if you just want to have fun then fucking game jams are the are the way to go just like get a bunch of friends and some yeah. snacks and stuff and have fun for a weekend. Cool. And that's it's 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 like it's like playing football for fun on the weekend, right? Like you're not expecting to 
play 10 weekends and then you're gonna like sell yourself to Manchester United yeah, yeah. or something. It's just what's been fun. what's been your kind of perspective like you uh you've been kind of transitioning to that you know trying to dabble around with getting stuff on steam selling games what's your what's the what's that kind of like uh moving from one thing to another getting to the the biz i guess how you ever want to call it it's really fascinating because like it it like uh, I'm 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 getting closer and closer to understanding how business developers, like the people in charge of doing the business for studios and stuff, how they see indie games and how like producers and like the publishers see indie games because it doesn't like what's inside of the game doesn't fucking matter as soon as you have those statistics in front of you. It's really crazy where you like before, like I was like when I was just making browser games, I was like, oh yeah, okay. And then there's this important part, and there's a lot of like small details that matter inside yeah. of the game. And I'd get like two statistics. I'd get like a rating, and I'd get the play count. But now I have, I can see how many people from Italy play this game, right? And I can see how long do yeah. they play it for, and how many people read. And it just gets more and more abstracted, and it doesn't feel the game itself feels less and less important the more like business stuff I do. And yeah, so that's, that's definitely a pretty crazy shift. It doesn't mean that I don't care about the game. It's just like a new perspective that wasn't, that isn't, isn't there in web games at all. Yeah. I guess you gotta, you kind of think, think about a different, different aspects of the game rather than like, there's definitely the thing with web games or whatever, where it's like, you know, you're popping it out on like new rounds itch maybe for like free and you just kind of want feedback or whatever. But at some point it's like, you gotta, you got to kind of get the feedback yourself if you want to make the game in that way. Yeah. Yeah, you have to like yeah, I think I think that that kind of ties in with like not doing like like not seeing game jams as like the the ultimate source yeah. of creativity. It's this kind of like okay, so what do I actually want? Like now that I can use this engine, now that I know that I can get shit done, what do I want, right? Like what is my personal goal? That's fucking. That's a, that's a scary stuff. Yeah, yeah. Trying to figure that all out, and get it all. Man, there's definitely that shit. Goddamn Steam, goddamn biz shit. Let's see, there's that. Uh, do you guys participate in that recent Game Maker's Toolkit? I kind of, I was slipping on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was a really fun experience. Uh, yeah, I think we all did, yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. I someone approached me to participate uh, as a team, so I was like, "Yeah, sure." It was my first time in actually a, a huge team, not a huge, but huge for a game gen five people. It yeah, that's a lot. And I was like, I had my goals shift during the gen. I usually tend to have like uh, the game playable, like cool of design, etc. But in this case specifically, I my goal was to have everyone's job inside the game. Like I was responsible for all the the artistic vision for from the artist, from the music guys, the composer, and I was like. I really want to get there, the job in the game as soon as possible because I had previous experience that I couldn't implement everything. And I was like, no, man, that feels so bad. Like, the art guy works a lot on this and I couldn't manage to put everything in the game. So my perspective during that jam was like really shifted towards the team more than the game itself. It was a really cool experience. Yeah, yeah. Did you mess around on that new, that new game jam? Wombat, the game um, maker toolkit. Yeah, no, I, I <laughs> like I've, I've been super busy, but like it's I've I've been kind of looking forward to it. It's it's kind of nice to like like even though I don't do as many as many game gems anymore, like in full them there or for GMTK or something, like I'll I'll sit down and I'll give myself like a one day deadline and make something really really quick just to yeah to like like not get rusty I guess in that in that regard. So it was fun. I just went like. Yeah, I, I, I tried a very intuitive development approach where I would just make different scenes that were not really tied together by a core mechanic, but more by a theme. And I just, like, I had this rule of, of like, if I make something, I can't delete it and I can't, like, change it a lot. Hmm, so yeah. I ended up with something that 
that is like super unique and unlike anything I've ever made before. And it's really, it's really fun. Like, like when people play it, they have like fun for two minutes and then the game's over. That's, that's cool. It was nice. Yeah. Yeah. And something that Niancy mentioned, uh, working, kind of working with other people. Is that something that you double with? Yeah. Yeah. Like for, for Gut Whale, I worked with an artist who, who also worked on Nyanzu's jam game. I think you, you worked with Franek, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I worked with an artist and a musician, uh, Britt Brady, who is nice enough to like help me out with, with audio stuff. It's super hard. Like it's definitely necessary because I can't draw and I can't compose. I, 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 I really cannot. Like I, if I, if I would start to learn it now, it would take me like five years to get to a publishable level, I think. So yeah, it's, it's, it's again, like it's, it's a whole different aspect that doesn't really, that never really came through for me in my web development phase in my new ground, uh, high time where I was just making stuff alone with like BFXR and yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's it's tough it reply it, it requires like a completely different skill set and also patience which is like you can skip patience if you're making web games because you are like on your own but like yeah if, if 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 like if i have to explain what i mean like four times then obviously the other person isn't stupid what i'm saying is fucking incomprehensible so like yeah. there's there's a lot of like stuff like this where you are kind of unsure what's the problem and yeah and then you have to figure it out and communicate that shit and that's hard but yeah it's definitely worth it just, in working solo uh i had problems before because i usually work solo and when when you work solo you actually have all the feedback and your behavior is in fostered by the community the players are getting like oh this idea is cool oh this game is nice and like I think it boosts your ego and you have like to lower it down when working with another person in the team. So this is kind of hard when you work solo because it's like this conflict of being reinforced for working as, as with your own idea, your own creative, your own creative vision. And like when you bring someone up, you have to give up everything, like not give up, but put aside and trying to understand the other people, the other, uh, the, the vision they have. It's like, it's just very important skill to have. I, ha I struggled with it a lot. And yeah, I think I'm better at it now, but yeah, it was yeah. definitely a hard experience. Man, I do know you have a frequent collaborator. You're our boy, Connor Grail. What's the... Uh... Grail. <laughs> Good old Grail. Yeah, man. I've Does... known him for so long. I like. Uh, I'm assuming you're. I kind of cut you off. I'm assuming you're asking how, how do I, how do we start collaborating? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only person I really work with is Connor Grail, because I've been working with him since college. Because he was uh, going to the same school I was, and he was in M MIA. That's music industry arts. Yeah, and like we just kind of met each other through luck. Like he, one of my other friends from my hometown, was in the same course as him, and then. We met up and he was like, I'm interested in uh, sound development for video games. And it's like from there, it's been like all my school projects and now whatever I'm making now. Yeah. yeah. Do you and you do you do all the art or whatever and programming for your games? Yeah. The, the yeah. reason I I think I make games because I like doing art for them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> I I don't have a future as a programmer, dude. There's no way. <laughs> no, don't say that. You got, you got good games. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, uh, it's so dead ass simple. It's like, uh, you can jump. It's a platformer, but like, it's a platformer, but, and that's all it is. So to program <laughs> it is so easy. Just add in gravity, add in jump button, easy. It's video <laughs> yeah, games. <laughs> How about you shoot and it shoots? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same gimmick but i love how, it because it's just recoil <laughs> yeah it, it's recoil <laughs> man it's 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 fun though no it's yeah great. yeah working with how do you guys uh Niansu or wombat uh what's it called how, uh do you guys how do you find different people to work with or whatever because i know like you said, uh, Wombat, you said that, what's it called? called? Uh, you worked with someone that Niansu worked with for Gutwhale? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, like uh, the guy. The guy's called Franek. He's a Polish pixel artist, and how I found him. Basically, there's like I, I talk to people on Twitter a lot. Like I just send people direct messages when I like their stuff. So through that, I got in contact with an artist who's now doing the art for the current project I'm working on. And when I started to make Gutwell, I needed an artist, but that artist had to drop out. So I just literally went on Twitter, saw that like Franek followed me on Twitter and was like, Hey, you want to make a game? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I think Philippe and Franek or like new, new, new Nessu and Franek met through that connection as well. Yeah. Than... Yeah. Yeah. Twitter definitely seems like a very, uh, it's got a solid kind of game dev scene on Twitter or whatever. You guys noticed that, right? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Like, I think that's like the only reason I'm still on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, yeah. it's so sick. It's so it's so freaking good for game dev. I think compared to anything else. Um, yeah. I think yeah, I just for the reason of connections, <laughs> not for mar for marketing itself, because like I don't think marketing really works. What do you mean by that? Uh, uh, yes, if yes. you see like, uh, uh, you probably have a different perspective than me because. Of your recent test, Josh, I think. Uh, but um, if you see like the statistics of your tweets, like when you publish a game and you see like the likes compared to the link clicks, if yeah. you post your game like in, in your grounds or so, you get a way more players from your grounds itself than Twitter. Yeah. Doesn't it's, matter how big your, your follow base is, basically. It's, it's the exact same on Steam. Like the the Steam numbers are like in the hundreds of thousands to millions of impressions, without and like like a minuscule amount of that comes from Twitter. Wow. Yeah, it's, that that's another thing that like having access to those statistics, like it 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 kind of fucks your preconceptions. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it, it, it really felt like, because I spent like five years like making gifts for Twitter and was like, oh yeah, that's great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play <laughs> of games. And it's like, no, it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> like, there's definitely still benefits to Twitter though. I, yeah. I think especially yeah. through like meeting people, right? Like, I think yeah. I met both of you. Well, actually, I think yeah, I yeah. met you, I think I met you guys through Newgrounds. It had to have been Newgrounds. Somewhat, somewhat mm -hmm. Newgrounds, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think, yeah. Maybe maybe it's the it's the Newgrounds bubble on Twitter or like it's seeing each other's games on Newgrounds. I don't know. Yeah. Some a little bit of both, probably. We get familiar yeah. with our faces, usernames, whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely meeting people or whatever. There's definitely that aspect of like, uh, and even even if it's like not meeting them, you it's like you know like I do know Wombat, uh, good old stuff Wombat. You make very I guess gifable. <laughs> your your games can be expressed very well within a GIF. <laughs> eh, yeah, maybe maybe that's uh, uh, maybe I skewed the perspective there because for a long time I just made GIFs like only GIFs, right? Oh yeah. Like it's 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 the 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 difference between like a game that I made and a GIF that I make is is like huge because when I make like I was fucking I was hugely addicted to getting likes on Twitter for years. So I, I, I like figured out or kind of like trained myself, like one of those rats in those experiments, like <laughs> how to get the most likes, right? Yeah. Which is to like tell a story and like have something that's surprising and stuff. And many of those gifts don't fucking work as games or like if I would have made them in a game, they would have sucked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that like the, 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 the most played game I ever made looks okay in gifts. But it's really fun to play, which is why more people played it than like watch gifts of it. Wait, which game is that? The Hen Hendulum Hendulum Plus. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Do you guys struggle with that? Like, uh, what? Like people like they're like, oh, this game is like so sweet, but then like when you try to work on it, you're like, this game, like, it it's like good for like, cause uh, like for me at least, I I make these super small games. I think yeah. Melt in particular, it's like really fun for the size of it. But yeah. like, I tried to continue development. And I'm like, man, like this gets old and it's. Yes, I know. It, you know, it's like, yeah. I find that pretty. Yes, well, I, like, I, I, 
I had the XX, the exact same discussion, I think, yesterday uh, with another designer because I sometimes I reach a uh, break point after like 15 minutes of gameplay training. Then, if I keep working on this game, this game will suck even more. I don't want to make a game that sucks, and I I can. I can like produce more content for this with as much care as I did at the beginning, and if I continue developing it, it will suck. So I like quit the game and say, oh, "Okay, it's done. I cannot produce more content for this." <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's definitely that aspect of like, uh, you know, a little bit of like style over substance, where it's like, "Oh, you know, this this game looks cool," but then when you actually get down to it, it's like, you know. You know, there's there's only so much you can kind of do with it. I I think this happens like like I I definitely know this feeling, and what I like trained myself to do is to just make games that have like no like wasted gameplay, right? Like I try to map all map all of the uses of a mechanic out like pretty thoroughly, and then just like do them all one after the other like a checklist, and then the game's done, right? Yeah. Which is why many people always complain, oh, the game's too short, the game's too short. But it's like, no, it, it works because it isn't too long. Right? Yeah. It's like there's a lot of like effort goes into making sure that it doesn't waste your time. And that that's kind of what like the web space demands. Because you're not yeah. you're not going to Newgrounds to spend like four hours like you would with like Mountain Blade or like Red Dead Redemption or whatever. Yeah, You're not, yeah. Like, like you don't go on new grounds after a hard day's work to like put put the feet up and like like relax. You 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 want like some weird fucking shit for ten minutes and then you want to see some other weird fucking shit. And yeah, and that that like like that's that's I think like what 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 the, the this web game space produced for me. Not necessarily because the web game space like produces that automatically, but it's just what it made me feel was that. I was like considering only the mechanical part and maybe to some aspect like the style and how like cool does it look part of a game and not like the player fantasy and like like what what is the like retention loop or like like how how do people engage with this game that I'm making on the longer term because I only ever practice in 10 minute bursts which which is cool but which then produces a problem if you want to scope up but you're using the tools to scope up that you also use to make web games right this is a, is a different skill set it's like different genres or something mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. i think that's what i was talking about that's the next step right it's just like there's a possible thing right now it's like i can't, physically cannot do it or not yet yeah. at least. but but it's it's only the next step if you want to do it right like if if that's something you want it's not the inherent next step i think mhm <sighs> That's that's a good point too, because it's like, man, web games are freaking fun to make. It, it's like, like people actually play them. I think, yeah. unless yeah. <laughs> statistics are, di- uh, you know, yeah. unless I'm being lied to by Tom. <laughs> All these comments are just Tom, but I think people <laughs> <are> Tom. <laughs> I've thought about that sometimes. I'm like in the shower, <laughs> shampooing my hair. And just wants, we he, all... just wants to keep you yeah, around. Is, is this even real, dude? <laughs> It's all it's all paid paid like uh, uh, <laughs> from Russia or something. Yeah, t- Tom We're just trying to keep us fault. hostage. Keep <laughs> posting. <laughs> yeah, there's that uh, something that uh, Bill Primo asked in the chat. He said, "When scaling up a game jam concept, what part of game do you think is the hardest part of flushing it out?" The, the narrative, the story, the the uh-huh. and and connected to that, what you actually want to express with the game. Oh, wow, interesting. Because, like, for game jams, right, like, you can kind of, like, like like we said before, you can replace that internal motivation with a deadline. Yeah. Say, oh, yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Like, ha, ha, isn't it funny that the sheep, like, uh, fart gnomes or something? Isn't it funny because it's a game jam? But when people then like it and they play it, like, and they want to play it in longer terms, right, like, what I think many game jam people struggle with is exactly that same switch to, like, how do I make this work in the long term? How do I make this into something that isn't like a, a joke or a short story, right? Like, how do I turn this into a novel? I find that uh, there's an aspect of like gameplay, or at least with the games I make or whatever. It's like, it's like, wait, I can't just have like a you know stinky you know five ten minute platformer, and I can't just <laughs> put it on Steam as for ten dollars. There's definitely an aspect of like, or at least that I want to get out of a game I make of like. 
you know, at least somewhat unique or interesting gameplay yeah. that it's hard to kind of translate over. Yeah, but but the like the question is now: Do we become like Steam games, or we do we train Steam users to be more like us? Yeah, yeah. It feels like there's definitely a, somewhat of a shift, some way of like, uh, there's that Steam Direct or whatever, where it's like you know it's just a hundred bucks to get a game on Steam. So even in, it's like even if you put it out for free, it's kind of you know some some like you either train the the Steam people to think differently, or you know you get. You kind of get that taste of what it's like. So very strange, very strange scene, very strange game dev shit that's been happening. <laughs> yeah. Re recently, we had like uh, two or three major games that were a success, and they were pretty small. Like uh, the Haunted Island, I think that's from Grace Bergson, and a short hike from Adam Yu. They were like really small games. Good way as well. Did pretty good, I think. They they are they are in no way related to like what you typically find on Newgrounds and what like 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 and what I enjoy uh, making. Um, oh. Because they are insanely focused on player experience. Insanely focused on like here is a very concrete fantasy that you get to live out as a player. Yeah. That here mm -hmm. is. Like a short hike is basically, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like a, a simple Zelda dungeon mixed with like cozy aesthetic or something. It's something that people already know and that they like, that, that, that feels extremely familiar or has a very clear function. And like, like small games that are more like web oriented are more like, Hey, Here's this system that in itself is extremely fucking interesting and cool. Mm -hmm. And that's why I don't need a player fantasy, right? Like, that's why I don't need yeah. to convince players to, like, imagine that they are a frog detective or something. But yeah, do, you, yeah. do you think what is, what is lacking from, uh, from web games compared to what Steam users, like, want, uh, is the top down approach, like, selling a fantasy alongside the game? Yeah. Yeah, because because for web you don't need to. Because for web you just go, oh, here's a funny picture, uh, and a thumbnail and a cool name, and now you can play it for ten minutes and you had fun. Because there is no yeah. like barrier of entry because you can just click and you can play it. So we don't need to sell it as hard. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can just play around with it. Like you know, you don't need you don't need elaborate lore to <laughs> get into handy loom. You know. Yeah. No. And 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 like. Yeah, like like with with uh, Matt's jam game, it's just you see a gif of it and you go like, oh fuck yeah, that's how it works. Now let's see if I can like uh, beat it. If like, right, is is more of a personal like mechanical approach to it. But if you have to pay five dollars for that, you're like, why should I do that? I can just get that on Newgrounds for free right now. Yeah, yeah. That's basically the difference. Web games are based on experience, while uh, Steam games are based on expectations. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of like, oh, our expectations. Yeah, like expectations of an experience, right? And then they just use their like mechanics to translate that experience. I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm losing my train of thought. I'm sorry. Just to be clear there, you were kind of saying like, let's say like an example would be like Imp, right? Like, I, like that was a game I just released and, It was just like this simple thing, right? I, like yeah. I'm still working on that, and that is my, you know, that's my Steam project right now. Yeah, maybe, yeah. you know, maybe, yeah. probably not. But <laughs> no, I mean, you know, for it. I, I'm working on it right now. Did you say that uh, if people were to see that, they'd say, "Why would I buy this version when I could just go online and play it on Newgrounds for free?" I mean, would like. I, I I don't I, like I'm I'm saying this really not in a in a mean way, but I think yes. I think yeah. Um, like if like, but 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 here's the thing, right? Like I'm talking about a hip hypothetical situation where okay. you have the like the the experience kind of to make something that will hit emotions in people, and oh. that that's that's something like this experience to like know how to sell something to people based on experience 
is not going to come from like beating yourself up that the first attempt is not going to work out. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we like la last year we published a game on Steam which is which had like the same the same problem kind of that I'm now projecting onto your game. Maybe it doesn't have that, <laughs> but like what happened to us where we were like we had this cool mechanic. And we build a lot of content around that mechanic. And then we just put it on Steam and sold it. And we're like, it's it's like, it's text adventures, but it's different. And it's really cool. And it has this great mechanic. And nobody yeah. bought it, right? Like, it's because it didn't sell a fantasy. If we had used that mechanic to then say, oh, and now we're telling a story about a blind pig who, like, whatever. And added some yeah. branding and some concrete story and some concrete narrative and concrete experience that is not only be good at the game or like understand this puzzle, but it, that is like reconnect with your family or whatever. Right. Yeah. And it would have probably sold mm -hmm. better, but I, okay. Like, but like, that's like, and, and when, when I say that I'm obviously talking from like my own personal perspective and also it's not something that I can completely explain to you how it feels to have that kind of failure on steam, which is why I would, 100% encourage you to put that game on Steam yeah. simply because you will understand how the processes on Steam work, how they differ from Newgrounds. And that's yeah. an experience you can only get from putting that thing on Steam. Yeah, for sure. Because I did I did mobile for Wiz and that was tragic. I was like, this <laughs> is the worst thing I've ever experienced in my life. What happened? Oh, it's just I, I had no idea. I just went in blind, you know, with mobile. was just like, I just yeah. want a game like on my phone and let's see like how this kind of thing works. And like, I was like, so I was trying to share it with my friends and stuff like, Oh yeah. Like I just put like this, uh, one of my games I made on, on mobile and like you can type in my shitty name and the name <laughs> of the, the game and it yeah. will still be five minutes scrolling yeah. to, to find oh. it. Okay. And I and I was just like astonished of like this. Uh, it, I I should have done research, obviously, and I did it for like that learning experience, like the like just see what it's like all about. Like, cause yeah. and I learned like if you want to succeed on mobile, you have to pretty much get featured. Yes, like yeah. mm -hmm. I didn't yeah. know that, but <laughs> I learned a, a lot, right? And I think that's yeah. the same thing with what you're tra trying to talk about with Steam, right? Just yeah, try it out, see what happens, cry. Maybe cry. Maybe. No, no. I mean, I mean, like, <laughs> like the the reason like I didn't cry when the first game on Steam failed so hard was because when we started making that, we we explicitly said to ourselves, "This is a test of Steam, right?" Like everyone in the For team sure. never pushed something on Steam before, so we were like, "This is a nice mechanic. This is interesting. It's not going to sell a lot because we're not pros. So what we're going to focus on is understanding how Steam works and like learning about it, right?" Yeah. yeah, and like like the experience you had with mobile, you can tell me about it, but I have no fucking idea how it feels, right? Uh -huh. so like, I have read a hundred times in some weird blogs by some mobile people, like, oh, you have to get featured, you have to get contacts with Apple, but I don't really know how it feels to not have contacts with Apple, right? So I'm gonna mm -hmm. maybe like I'm gonna be more likely to ignore it, and and this this kind of like deep deep seated like fear or like like knowledge. Is something you only get by by doing the thing, which is again why I don't want to discourage you from putting it on Steam. Definitely, no, no, yeah, completely agree. Just see what it's like, figure out the steps. Yeah, test with the waters and get get a billion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, reviews I mean, that say your game stink. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe or or get one review. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do you remember how it was to put your first game on Newgrounds? Like, what were your expectations back then, right? Because what we're talking about now is something we already went through on Newgrounds. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Oh, cool. I don't to think about it. Maybe I'm the prodigy. But <laughs> when <laughs> I had that experience on Itch, I posted Oh Well on Itch. And, like, I was, sto I was stoked, though, because I was making games for three years and nobody was playing them. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then when I posted it on itch, I got like three hundred views and some nice comment, like I think two comments, and I was freaking popping off. I was stoked, <laughs> and then somehow like Newgrounds got into my like line of sight. I honestly I can't remember what like pulled me to the website, right? But Mister mm -hmm. Fallpeep front page, oh well, 
And then I'm getting like all these rage comments. I'm like in tears. <laughs> and like the game is so shit. Or it's like, but it's like a good shit. It, it's like perfect for the Newgrounds community, right? Like this. Yeah. I don't they know, man. Rip their hairs out. So, so, so yeah. like, like, did your expectation on Newgrounds like get met when when you uploaded that game? Did you, did you feel like you had achieved what you set out to do? It it, it definitely exceeded what I ever expected. Like nothing could have compared to that. <laughs> I think wow. it was freaking sweet. Newgrounds is awesome, dude. Just for that, yeah. Yeah. I, I can't lie. I had the same experience as well. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> what game was that? What? Was Chip It Down the game from Lundu there? Yeah, that was... was a sweet game. I remember playing that years ago. <laughs> yeah, I posted there and like I got front page and I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was so, pretty so, cool. So. For for okay, so that's interesting because like my f experience with Newgrounds was I I saw indie game the movie, and I was like oh shit I want to like, oh. people right like like I want to be Edmund I want to <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah no no it was it was really like innocent and unironic like oh shit I want to have what these people have right because they can communicate with other people and they don't have to go outside like yeah. that's, that's all I ever wanted. So I saw Edmund McMillan, who came across as the nicest guy in the documentary. He put stuff on Newgrounds, right? Like they show Newgrounds in that movie. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to do the same. And I put the game up and I was like, yeah, now I'm going to be like Edmund McMillan. And the game was so bad that it got blammed, right? Like it got deleted permanently <laughs> from Newgrounds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so that was definitely a slap in the face. Like, this is, so, so it's super funny that, that your experiences are so positive because I would have ex expected them to also be negative, but apparently I just really, really suck. I've had, I've had a similar <laughs> thing with you. But I had no expectations at all. Like, I didn't, I wasn't expecting anything from you guys. So like, oh, I'm just, gonna just publish the game here and see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've had some with uh, like you want, but you know, seeing indie game movies it's like, well, wow, I'm gonna post yeah. this game on Newgrounds, and I'm gonna blow up. I'm gonna be a millionaire by the end of the <laughs> year, and then <laughs> I post a game, you know, three stars, maybe like a, a thousand plays or something. <laughs> yeah, I show it uh, to dude, and shame. I can't even lie though; that movie still has like a huge impact on me because i remember yeah, seeing it that it's so good man what, what i find fascinating is to like or what i found fascinating on newgrounds what like oh shit like edmund mcmillan really has a profile here and i can check out his, yeah. his like early games and holy fuck yeah. they're <laughs> have you, right they're so bad have you like, played oh, shit, his great. first games <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're not really games. They're like these kind of like visual novel type things. But there's just no, there's a one called up. the the Clubby Seal, something like this. Oh yeah, yeah, Clubby the Seal. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> weird. <laughs> the, oh, oh no, well, classic shit. The dress up. See, everyone everyone starts somewhere. He's got to you know sometimes he's got to make a little dress up game for Newgrounds. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and the fact that, like, after all these decades, we can still just go back and look at the early stuff of the people yeah, yeah. we, like, like I think there's some stuff by, like, Cactus on there who then made Hotline Miami and, and like, yeah, it's yeah. probably super fucking oh. bad. And we can look at it and feel better about ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think Tom shared, like, uh, my friend Pedro, like, oh, the, yeah, the yeah, prototype. Yeah, goddamn prototype, yeah. That was bonkers because that, like, no offense, but, like, the the old version of that game like it feels like shit it's like <laughs> but it's i can't so move <laughs> like, like like uh the developer told me like that game still gets like thousands of plays every month like new plays because people wow. really so much yeah yeah well wow. they look it up they hear all the fuss about this cool game called my friend pedro no 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 no, no 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 this, this, was, this was before <laughs> devolver picked it up right like it was like oh, a slow yeah. burner like people kept playing and playing and playing it which yeah. is like probably one of oh. the reasons that they picked it up oh the dream the, dream. the game dev dream <laughs> devolver is the holy grail <laughs> <laughs> i don't think so anymore after having dealt with them a little bit sometimes because like uh. they're they're a business that's that's what they are and they have like limited money limited time and also limited like love for people who love them and that doesn't mean that they're assholes right but it's just like they're not yeah they're not the only people who really care about games 
<laughs> there's a yeah. lot of other people who are also worthy of our like weird admiration yeah so so you've looked into a lot of uh i'm assuming a lot of publishers it's shit it's Started, shit yeah totally. <laughs> yeah but, like like a lot of the like uh in the beginning of the year i was pitching uh the game that i'm gonna announce tomorrow i think secret <laughs> project in brackets that one tomorrow brackets, oh. yeah. I, is that a secret i is still it don't know dude I swear that's just the name of it. I swear <laughs> no, it's no, just been no, this. No, it's not. It's it's a game that I you don't all believe know you. That I've been trying to make a commercial commercial version of for like years. Like it's it's one of my original new. Grounds. A game that we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a remake of an old Flash game I made for Newgrounds, like four years ago. Is it? Is it I'm, the I'm, one where you go like bing bong bing bing like that one? I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm 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 not gonna answer. <laughs> 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 is it shit two remake of shit two? No, it's shit five. Oh yes. shit! <laughs> the shit collection. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but but sorry, sorry, publishers. It's it's like a, it's 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 even worse than switching to Steam for me because there are people that they just have completely different views on what games should do because they're not they're not interested that much in like what happens in the minute to minute or in the moment to moment stuff. They're more interested in yeah. like, what is the aesthetic and can we sell this aesthetic? Because advertisement is always just like, how does this look and how does this make people feel? And not yeah. how does it yeah. actually feel to play the thing? Yeah, yeah. So I, I failed with publishers like left and right. Uh, with Like I talked to a lot of people and I fucked everything up. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> but it's like, it's it's just in three years, maybe I can do that shit well. It's just going to take time. Yeah, yeah, you're running so Experience low. Experience again. <laughs> like, it's important to know that publishers are important, but you have to experience yourself the same thing as Steam and mobile store and everything else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You gotta see yeah. what they see before you deal with them. It, it's, it's like Newgrounds gives us a kind of, like, safe space where we can just fail because there's so much horrible stuff that's really, really bad on there. And we can yeah. just add to that and there's no pressure. And there's like yeah. a community where people like also most of them also have tried to make stuff or like are making stuff right now, so they understand how it how hard it is. And I guess when you move out of that like uh kind of space, it it becomes harsher and colder. So yeah, yeah. New grounds. Sell stuff. In, in that an analogy, New Grounds is a very warm and nurturing place. Definitely, it's like the. I think from my experience. Of all the portals, uh, Newgrounds was the like the more welcoming place to to be. Like yeah. the community there is so open to new projects, and like they give you important feedback, and they are easy to help help out the developers as much as they want to play the, the game. They want a better version. They want to to see you grow as a developer. So it's yeah. not like one side conversation. Like it's it's a both side. Yeah, yeah. Friends been listen, we're all we all been talking about Steam and Newgrounds, but I think the the kind of sort of middle in between that is like itch itch IO. Have you guys tried to like sell something on there? Uh I never sold anything on itch IO but like free games. But I don't know, I think that I've got to the front page on Newgrounds a few times oh sorry, on the itch IO a few times, but it's not like the same traction. Like they are, I think there's a lot of projects there. So everything you publish in it doesn't have a lot of attention, and it's not very engaging. And people don't leave feedback, even though they play. I don't know. I I think the they're not. I uh, how to describe this? I don't think they are. Mm, they don't have much to say to you. Like, there's not a big connection between the developer and the community itself. Yeah. That's my experience. Yeah, I, yeah. I used it a lot, too. Like, that's what I use primarily. And, yeah, it, there's this... It's so empty, man. It's like... I, like, Especially, like, the amount of games that are getting published there. Yeah. Like, all the time. Like, the whole... Like, the front page. Like, you can get front page, but, like... The, it doesn't even matter. It's, it's still yeah. like this huge wall of stuff. Yeah. 
it's like good luck. And I don't even think there's, it, I don't know if it has that much, uh, I don't know how many users, like people that go to itch every day kind of thing. Like, yeah. like in, ter in terms of plays, itch is like one tenth to one hundredth of what Newground gets, like in my experience. Yeah. And, but the big, the big, the big fucking but there is like a hundred percent of any like press I randomly got, like for some web game or some, some project or whatever. They, like, if, if I publish the game, like, a, on Newgrounds and on itch.io, the press, the press is always going to link to itch because they only yeah. look on itch. Yeah. So, like, uh, itch, itch is, that, is that. you said it really well. Sorry, just one, you said it really well where it's like in the middle between Steam and Newgrounds where, like, yeah, like people go on itch to like, like journalists go on itch and let's players go on itch, right? They don't necessarily go on Newgrounds. Like because itch is closer to Steam, so it's closer to what they know, and it feels safer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Itch is a marketplace, so it's like the between the it's really in the the in between between the grounds and Steam. But uh, even though most of the press covers itch, uh, most of the contacts I got for selling web games came from Newgrounds. Yeah, 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 yeah same definitely. here. Because because itch I always not. Is not featuring in web games, right? They are just doing in the like they're an independent version of Steam. Where again, I think it's more about the aesthetic and about like the fantasy. There's still yeah. a lot of like pure mechanical stuff on itch because it's it's like easier to access it still than on Steam, but it still has that like direction to like this is a storefront where you buy experiences, where you buy like yeah. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but it's kind of like. Itch wants to show off the stuff that makes their website look that much better, you know? Like, you use their features, like their theming and stuff, in a really yeah. interesting way, and they're like, I can't wait to show that off kind of thing. Yeah. Compared to what your game actually is. That's the only reason I have more games on each of the new grounds. I like to to make my page look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's fun. It's so much fun. Like, with... <laughs> Like with Wiz, I thought I still think I'm a genius. I had like these clouds and I made them the same color as a background. So it just like <laughs> looks, it just like molds in there. Oh, and I'm like, that oh, is oh. so sick. Yeah. yeah. One thing, it's like, it's like, it's almost like, you know, Newgrounds. Newgrounds is like, you know, the arcade. You know, you got a billion different people popped in, you know, 10 minutes, five minutes, playing your game, think it's cool. And then you got Itch and I guess Steam to an extent where it's like, you know, storefronts. You know, you. Uh, not necessarily on itch where you buy games exactly, but you know, it's that aspect of like, you kind of want to be selective in a way about what games yeah. you pick. Yeah. But with Newgrounds, it's like people, people are like, oh, hey, what's this new game? Let me check it out. You know, something like that. I think like that's completely hypothetical and pulled out of my ass in this moment. I think it's because like nice. storefronts are like symbolically, they're more about ownership, right? Because you choose what you put into your shelf kind of yeah and what you choose to put in yourself like reflects your identity to some regard like i'm convinced people just buy games because they like reflect how they think about themselves so if someone is like going through a dark gothic phase they're much more likely to play <laughs> dark souls right yeah. because it reflects their personality <laughs> even if they don't enjoy playing it but they're not going to return it because they have a weird emotional attachment to it Whereas yeah, on yeah. new grounds, the focus, like the user desire is much more, yeah, like on give me some weird fucking shit because that's who I am, because I try weird fucking shit. So in a way, it's all connected to like how the people that use it see themselves, I guess. Uh, yeah, definitely the aspect of like the different what, uh, culture. Is that the word you want to use? Cultures of, you know, itch, steam. Newgrounds, or I guess, you know, whatever else. Yeah, but and, I mean, we we all are using all three, right? So I guess, yeah, like, yeah. Think of like mm -hmm. single cultures. Maybe it's more like modes of like interaction that you are in when you're on the website. Yeah, yeah. I guess so, something like, like that. Like, it's, it's, it's like when you come down to dinner and you realize that like friends of your parents are there, and suddenly you're like, oh, okay, now I'm a different person <laughs> slightly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah, yeah. Throw on the mask really quick. <laughs> So you gotta remember going back to our first experiences. Newgrounds, 
Itch, Itch was technically, or Game Jolt, you might, uh, was like my first thing. Where it's like, you know, I post it and it gets like 20 plays. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Gaming Joe, trust that. You guys, you guys have had a ex- uh, horrible experience with Game Jolt? Because that's something I always forget about. Like yeah, it's yeah. even a thing. I, I definitely also started uploading there, maybe even before I put stuff on Newgrounds. And oh. it, it felt very sterile. Like, yeah, very. Absolutely removed yeah something with like itch itch definitely kind of seems like it knows what it is and what it is for developers especially it feels like you know they know what the devs or whatever want and they know the audience yeah. or whatever i guess yeah, yeah. They, they, they have, like the the market share in alternative gaming like yeah yeah game joke was the first place i heard about uh cloning of the games <laughs> my first game got cloned there it's like the the poor man's itch <laughs> i i think game troll might actually i don't know i think i need to try it again but i was trying it with dead guy for a bit i was continuing development on there yeah. and i i don't know it actually seemed like it had promise but it, it's so much work because it's like it's like this another twitter dude imagine having oh. two twitters oh no yeah. <laughs> no like <laughs> Yeah, it's I was just like, oh man, it's like this community thing. I think that they want you to have like, it's pretty much you're building like a Discord server. Is that that's the way oh. I kind of? Oh yeah, felt, <laughs> I felt with this. You're kind of like getting these people on board, but it's just too much work. Like someone should make a tool to like integrate all the free web portals, and like you have to publish once and in like manage all the comments in one place. Would wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's see. We're we're about uh we're nearly an hour in or so. Let's uh we'll go through a few of the questions that I've seen in the chat. One thing it feels like I've only been here for thirty minutes, dude. One thing uh Autlum asked in the a, few, a while back said, "How do you deal with criticism since people will give their thoughts after a game already came out and you can't really change anything?" You actually can. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you yeah, can yeah. <laughs> Games have updates. But you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. It's just like a little learning experience, I think. I, I usually get feedback and it's like obvious problem. And I say, ah, screw it. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll fix that on like the next project. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Especially. It, fe- it feels like you just carry that feedback with you for the next game. Like, yeah. Like, oh, okay. So, like, roughly every third person said this game was too hard, right? So I'll try to make it easier next time around yeah yeah <laughs> but but like I don't, I don't know like the, the what what i really like about newgrounds is that it kind of made me like more immune to criticism because like in the beginning i would obsess over like every comment and be like oh no what, what yeah. does this mean and blah 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 and then over time i realized that like under every game there are five comments that are like oh make it blue and five comments are like oh it's so <laughs> great that it's red and seven comments are like, oh, yellow is the best color, fuck you. And it's just, like, <laughs> people have weird opinions. And, like, yeah. Like, unless, like, 90% of people are screaming, like, hey, dude, uh, this is not cool. Uh, I feel like I can calmly acknowledge and then ignore it. Yeah, I think yeah. from the all the feedback I got in my life, uh, the only one that's prominent in all my games is, like, it's too short. Make more levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's that's the one I I always ignore. Like if you told me that, I'm sorry, I did not listen. <laughs> I think there's something wrong with me. Like I can't make a game that satisfy. Like I wish I could make a, a game with full length for web game, but I just can't. Did you guys think that Newgrounds? Like I, I'm kind of moving on with this question. Like kind of building on it a bit. Because I yeah. found Newgrounds feedback actually really helped me with learning how to make like better game design choices, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like yeah. my my introduction levels on the very first games I ever made are like brutal. But like now it's like it's become this like flow. Like, hey, I'm yeah. trying to teach you this mechanic and I kind of just yeah. follow the same thing. And then like Newgrounds is a place to kind of test like how successful was I at doing that kind of thing? And the feedback will always tell you, hey, were you successful or were you not? Yes. I think with I think with Dead Guy, it was absolutely hilarious. 
was like how bad of a job I did of teaching it. Like you just get like zero stars. <laughs> this game sucks. I can't jump over the first gap. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, and it's just like, oh, that was my fault. You know, I could have made that yeah. more clear. It, and it's like, I guess yeah. it also depends on like the approach, right? Because I, yeah. I always like uh, you just figure it out on your own because I find that that's a challenge itself. Yeah. But, but, but we like that because we're game developers, right? Like that's what we do. We <laughs> figure out how to make the guy jump alone that's how we make yeah. them jump in the first place so we enjoy that shit but most people think it's boring and horrible <laughs> yeah yeah i know uh, well <laughs> that's why it is. like 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 with 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 Handelum plus like i knew from testing which level would kick everyone off and that's of course the level i get the most comments about on newgrounds which is just like where there's the biggest like conceptual gap and for stuff like that, I think like anticipating, like because there's so many comments that will tell you what you fucked up, you're going to kind of anticipate like those comments and you're going to think like, oh, what could I have fucked up? And then that enables you to like learn like that design stuff you talked about. Yeah. So yeah, like like comments and criticism on Newgrounds, fucking great. Some of them are just like insane. Um <laughs> but you just have to learn to ignore the insane people, I think. It seems mm -hmm. like Newgrounds, uh, the Newgrounds kind of player base, whatever you want to call it, it's definitely very vocal, more than yeah. something like Itch. Like, you can have the same amount of, like, plays, but, like, Newgrounds will definitely be more... And I think part of that is the, the blam kind of system, or whatever. It's like, you know, you see a game, four stars, it's like, oh yeah, this game, this game's hot shit, let's see what this game's all about. And, you know, you kind of input your thoughts, and... I think that kind of goes all around the website, you know, that kind of thing of everyone, you kind of want to put your own thoughts into things, whether it's like art piece, movie, and then kind of games, you know? Yeah. So I think that's part of the reason why New Runs is very feedback oriented one, in that way. One, one, one interesting thing I just want to quickly say is that um, related to the Blam and like rating system is that when you release a game... It's going to have like half a star less of a rating for the first week than it will have like three months later. Because yeah. the people who like go into like the, the, the pit and who like rate all those games before they have been like uh, judged, they yeah, are yeah. super fucking tough, right? They have no patience for garbage. So they will, yeah. if they don't get your game, they will give you zero stars immediately. So like it's and then like after two weeks when it's it's kind of like filters out and people find the game through different means, the you can see how they're more forgiving. It's yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. This game's got a little charm. Yeah, that, that, that was just one question. Maybe we should uh not, <laughs> not, not, yeah. not that Keep going. Yeah. So much. yeah. <laughs> Someone says Mr. Johnson twenty two, he says for justifying retail releases, how about something in compilation of a few dozen Small games. Have you guys ever thought about that? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, uh, the, the the person mentions U450, I think, in the in the question. Oh yeah. And U450 has been in development for like four years, right? Or like five <laughs> years, and it's I think it's a hell project, and everyone involved in it is kind of like hating it. I have no idea. I've never talked to anyone about this, but it's like it's 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 just dragging on forever because you're organizing twenty people. And yeah. That's horrible. But I think uh, the question is more related to like uh, making a bundle of our own games and publishing in Steam, if that would work or not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys think? I do know that. I, that I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't think my games correlate at all with each other. So I don't <laughs> yeah. think that, that might be a good idea. The Nine Sue collection. It's Come on. Like, like, from a technical perspective, it's pretty hard because, like, we have to, like, yeah, it's not easy um, to put all of that stuff in there. And, yeah. But but like like I'm I'm currently secretly working on something like this, but that not it's it's it, it's not at all going in a commercial direction. It's more of a like ideological project that tries to change the Steam landscape because Ooh. yeah, it, it's gonna fail. But it's it's like it's gonna try at least. And then the shit five the collection. Beat. The shit five secret collection. project number two. <laughs> I I I I think bundles like this, like I actually no, I actually fucking I I pitched something like that to 
um, Devolver. Yeah, I pitched that yeah. to Devolver like three years ago, where I was like, okay, like I'm gonna get like six people together and we're all gonna make comic games, right? And the thing that they wanted it to have was a coherent story and theme. Yeah. Because that then again, I think, feeds into the fantasy thing. So yeah, they yeah. do have the the Devolver boot like thing, right? Uh, yeah, no, no, it's, but that's different, right? Because that's built on previous experiences, right? Because you know how you felt when you played Hotline Miami, so now you're gonna kind of like be, will be able to compare that to Milwaukee Hotline or whatever the D make. Yeah, something like a like a personal collection or whatever. It feels like you definitely kind of need like some sort of notoriety in a way, or like oh yeah. Like the basement so, like, collection from Edmund McMillan. Yeah, basement collection. It's like, oh, yeah. here's Edmund McMillan games. You know, like the best of. Or, I guess, you know, something like uh, what you were saying, Wombat, of like a coherent story. So even if it's like, you know, something like, uh, what's that one movie? Uh, Heavy Metal, where it's like kind of an anthology kind of thing, mm-hmm. maybe. Shit like that. Some, something where it's like, you know, connected in that way. It's got yeah. some narrative in a way. It, it, that, that's also how, like, the Animatrix works, if, if you've seen that. It's, uh, it's, it's crazy, like, in terms of, like, animation quality, it's insane because it's got a pretty big budget. It's, like, this anthology movie that consists of, like, short films about the world of the Matrix. Yeah. And so it, it just has that, like, oh, here's a huge fucking franchise, and now we're going to dive deeper into that. And that's the yeah, reason yeah. why people are going to buy that anthology movie. It's not because it's an anthology movie. It's because it has Matrix on the label, right? So with with a strong enough hook or, like, brand attached to it, sure. Yeah, yeah. You can need that stuff for biz. For selling in particular, that's what that, in that context or whatever. You definitely need something like that. Yeah. I mean, like, there is something to be said about just buying one Steam slot and then putting a collection of like 200 new ground games on steam for ten dollars or something just yeah. to like distribute them in a different world that's also kind of cool maybe yeah yeah something like that testing and like you said you know you gotta you know maybe maybe some one of us will do that you know test in the waters we'll see <laughs> that's too much work <laughs> not me <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get steam achievements hooked up yuck <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Steam achievements is really, yeah, 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 yeah. No Steam, achievements. Steam, Steam is bad. <laughs> Don't say that, dude. On, on that note, okay. let's wrap mm-hmm. up. What else? Steam bad? Is that the Steam bad? New runs good? That's the consensus. <laughs> consensus. <laughs> <laughs> let's say new grounds fast and nice and good, and Steam hard and slow, and I can pay my rent. I think that's the... <laughs> yeah. And Itch, if you want to get the press, all those journos, uh, that's the game dev. <laughs> <laughs> that's the tri- trifecta of like game dev wisdom. See, anything you guys uh, upcoming that people can look forward to and so that they can follow your Twitter.com accounts and Newgrounds accounts, what are you boys going to be up to? I've got no promises on anything. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> First team wish list now. We gotta publish an imp match. Yeah. Publish what? What did you say? Imp. Imp? Yeah. Like, well, imp. the new version's pretty sick, but I just think it might just be a Celeste clone. Who knows? But <laughs> 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 Matt's name is Matt. My name is Matt. This is not going to work out. <laughs> oh wow, he's gonna sue you for your first name. You're going down. Probably. <laughs> and that's why Canadian? my name is so shit, dude. It's like I like my name's <laughs> Matt and it's like well there's Matt makes I'm screwed. It's doomed. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and you're Canadian. You cannot be a Canadian named Matt. There's already a yeah. Matt. <laughs> there, there, there is already one. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> for fuck's sakes, dude, I gotta teach Bob. You did this. You did this Bob to yourself. <laughs> Yes, uh, Nayansu, what's upcoming with you? Uh, so I'm making a lot of prototypes now that I'm on vacation from the college. <laughs> so basically, I'll make a lot of handle stuff and post on Twitter. So feel free to look it up. It's Nayansu everywhere. So the only difficulty you'll have is typing my username. And that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Wombat, what are you cooking up? What are you cooking up next? 
Secret project. Secret project is gonna get announced tomorrow or the day <gasps> that. Um, then I'm gonna probably like I've been playing like we'll have to see how production uh goes on, but if everything works out, I'm gonna put out a demo of Secret Project on like Newgrounds and Hitch um sometime before release. Like um, I've been working on that for like literal years, and it's gonna be really disappointing mm. for that long time that I've <laughs> <had> on it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have to finish it, or I'll I'll go insane. So the secret <laughs> project is is gonna happen, and then I am also working on that like collaboration thing, which is gonna drop in October, and which is gonna get announced in September, or maybe even August, which is. Also secret, but like not known at all. And like I've never talked about that publicly. And it's basically an attempt to get people on Steam to reconsider their like their horizon of what games can be and what they can do and how you can interact with them and like try to get them to buy smaller experimental shit in the future changing the whole biz you're changing everything <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it's definitely a problem like yeah yeah buying games is so hard i think even for me two dollars for that game dude like <laughs> yeah i'm outraged it's insane but then i just <laughs> waste it away on coffee endlessly yes it's it's, it's really like a, a a developer uh i recently met like summed that up really well like buying a game like buying experimental games or buying short games it takes brain energy it's really weird it's like it's it's a this where, where you're thinking about like oh can i justify that is that going to be worth it how long is that game going to be what is like what will it be like and it's just exhausting yeah. to even think about buying like smaller games <laughs> For for me yeah. as well, like I, I definitely noticed that, and, and that developer put it into words. That's why I think early access are stupid. That's basically it. because uh, early access you like have the same questions actually, but the the outcome and the expectations are much bigger. Yeah, but but also you you think right that the, like the promise of early access, which I think why it's worked so well, is that the promise is oh I'm gonna spend ten euro. And then I'm, I can influence the game, right? And then I can decide yeah. stuff about the game. And I mm, think okay. that maybe that takes less brain energy and like strokes the ego a bit more. I don't know. I got you. Like this is all speculation. Everything I'm saying is like completely unproven and fabricated. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyways, yes. Game dev, HTML5, web games. This has been the, the cool episode. All those old guys from last episodes don't listen to what they say. These are the new kids on the block. Shit 5, I'm, early I'm access the, coming soon. <laughs> 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 I, I actually described it the same thing. Web games is like the underground <laughs> game developers. Yeah. We're just in like this little click. And it's like, I think like there's actually like a... Like the the content that comes out of this, and like no one even plays it. I'm like, this is sweet, but <laughs> nobody knows about it. No, we, we 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 are like extremely indie, or whatever the fuck is like two steps below what the average person considers to be indie, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah like his, historically, I think we are in a super exciting place because I mean, this is not gonna like help me pay my rent in any way. But like, there's this kind of like sliver of hope that in 50 years we will get like dug up by game archaeologists, and they will be like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, like now, now, now people are like, like rediscovering like crazy Russian experimental filmmakers from the 1920s, right? Nobody has yeah. seen their movies, but they did crazy shit. Maybe we can oh, yeah. be, maybe we can be the same in the future. That would be cool. In the depths of new rounds, we find stuff. The Lombats blamed game from long ago <laughs> <laughs> we find shit one <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> no no i mean it's like we're definitely part of some movement right like we're the post like post indie game the movie crowd and we're part yeah of yeah it definitely seems like that we are influenced. like writing history even if nobody cares about it but we are doing yeah 
even if even if it's not like you're a household name or whatever you know you're still we're also I, kind I, of I barely part of have a wave. household myself man <laughs> I, I, there's definitely something happening like yeah the the size game jams are getting like even my ones that are like local around me the entrants are soon gonna start having to get like people are gonna get declined like getting yeah, in yeah. it's just too many people or there's gonna be bigger venues because game development is just getting that much more like it, it's so easy to get into now or at least i thought yeah. and i thought i was listening to the <laughs> boomers last <laughs> week and they were like uh saying things about like i think they mentioned like html like it was hard to work with or whatever but like i use game maker and it's like the easy or at least i would consider it like the easiest thing ever it's like so easy to get into but like that's the thing you don't make a lot of money from it they made money yeah. like you <laughs> tyler said yeah i just made like a grand and i was 15 and i was like okay dude yeah <laughs> off of is- ads hello <laughs> i'm like F- like fuck dude <laughs> i wish i was like just a little bit all that i'd be freaking oh yeah no like, it. there's definitely that like sad feeling of like having missed the wave right because yeah yeah like, the gold rush yeah we like we 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 came too late just maybe because like we're younger or because we had different interests or whatever but we definitely yeah. missed like a more defining part of history like of gaming history yeah and I think we're making good content. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. we're not the first first people to make like good game content on the internet. So yeah. nobody cares anymore, and we have to. And this is, I think, like when what 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 were what, you saying? Like, oh, game jams are getting so huge and stuff. Um, at some point, like people are gonna split off from that like game jam culture, and there's gonna be like a counter movement or something like that, right? Whoa. Like if, if 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 you consider game development as like something that will evolve on the trajectory of like other media, you're gonna have like like yeah different um, like camps and different art directions and like like infighting and like art groups that like publish mad essays about each other and shit like that and i think yeah if the game jam culture gets big enough maybe it explodes into a very like diverse micro field which it is already i guess i don't know i'm just rambling right now i'm gonna stop talking (laughs) yeah game jam is very very interesting to see how everything is evolving like you know goddamn game makers tool jam was the was like the biggest jam on itch or whatever yeah God damn it's crazy shit thing. got like billion entries. <laughs> and and, yeah. and what I find so fascinating about it is that you can kind of see like you can see one of those games from the jam and be like, oh, this is influenced by like the JW school of feedback, right? Or you can be like, oh, this yeah, is yeah. definitely drawing from Downwell's art style. Or this is a uh, Edna McMillan inspired game, or this is uh like whatever. Like there's so much like there's there's like definite like uh, currents or like trends in inside of jam culture as well which are yeah really yeah fascinating. it's like indie games are being inspired by indie games now yeah whereas like the old games or the boomers were inspired <laughs> by it they're like oh hey let's make a game that's similar to this nes game i played way back in the day so it's very yeah. it's interesting to see the inspirations flows or whatever you want to call it so like that yeah, yeah I, I i i think a uh, big like um problem or a big challenge for like game jam culture if that exists is the yeah like the the the, the problem of becoming too self-referential <laughs> of like yeah, yeah. Like, like which which i i feel like when i look at like uh gmtk or at um ludum dare like there's a good chunk of games where i'm like okay yeah we've done this why are we doing it again? yeah yeah and again and again and then i'm making games that have the same problem right but it's it's, it's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it, it it just feels like something could like change in a bigger way listen here's what we do we make a game jam about game jams <laughs> <laughs> and knowing knowing the the scene that's probably already been done before <laughs> yeah, oh, oh shit <laughs> Some yeah, no, jam on already. itch <laughs> 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 you gotta keep up with that that i think i think it's wrap up time i think it's wrap up time with or no imp coming to steam 20 dollars oh shit five collection coming to steam easy 
we're announcing it right here. Secret project, yeah. I meant. <laughs> <laughs> This is the this is the end. Go follow all these lovely game devs and play all their games because they make good games and they look very nice. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Any final words, you boys, you fellas? Don't don't forget to talk to real people. Yes. <laughs> Finish games. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that is very important. Aww. That's. <laughs> dude, I got yes. nothing. I'm sorry, fellas, but I, I, this I, was fun. It was yes, fun. Yes. Good time with the game dev crew. <laughs> Let's see. Here we go. Here we go. Let me exit this bot man. Play the outro music. Thank you for listening to the New Grounds podcast. This show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly slash NGP Discord. For the latest news, follow us on Twitter at the NG Podcast. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of the song Gather Flag. Goodbye.